Hi, this is Logan, my folks, Line Mark Implement. I'm going to go over AMS documentation and section control for GS3 today. Uh, first thing we need to do is go down to the bottom right to the main menu. Then we're going to go into the green star, which is GS3, letter D tab. From there, the, the keys that we're going to touch on today is letter G, H, and I. Uh, them are the, the key features we got to make sure that we get filled out every year for proper documentation. So we're going to go into letter G first, which is resources. Here's where you can go ahead and set up a client, farm, field. Uh, you might already currently have them. Uh, we want to make sure they're current for the field that you're in and correct. Uh, next thing is task. We want to make sure that we're documenting the correct tasks. So if that's post merge brain, we'll go ahead and select that here. And then the next thing that we want to really hit on here is make sure we have the correct crop season selected. So we want to select 2021. The last thing here is uh, you can check the box for field locator on or off. Also on this page here, we have conditions. So we'll enter them in. Uh, if we know the temperature outside, the wind speed, we can enter that all in here and come back later and see that as well as notes for that field. The next tab we're going to touch on is equipment. Uh, we got to make sure we have the correct sprayer in here, machine model, machine name. Maybe we got a 40 series sprayer. Go ahead and populate that. Machine name, 4940. The next box over here, uh, we have our offsets. Uh, your sprayer typically is always going to have some preset offsets in there. We want to make sure we actually go measure them with the tape measure, make sure that's correct. That's going to be really important. And going forward with our section control, uh, if the offsets are incorrect, it can really throw that section control off. So to do that, we click on change offsets. And once we get into here, it'll walk you through A, B, C, and D, and it tells you exactly which measurements you need to make. So it's good at the end of the year, go ahead and take a tape measure and get the correct measurements on that. Once they're entered in, we go ahead and hit accept. Next thing we want to make sure our recording source is auto and grayed out, which it should be. And then we have to set up the boom as well. So we want to make sure we have our boom in here, our implement model. Uh, you can just put sprayer model in there or a 20 foot boom. So we can enter in here. 120 foot and hit accept. Same with implement model. Okay, so we got our implement model and our implement name. We're just going to name that 120 feet. Uh, you can do whatever you want there. Then down at the bottom, it's going to tell you the physical width 30 feet, implement width 120 feet, track spacing 30 feet. So if we want to change that, we got to change width, and we can do feet or rows here. So if we want to do that for row spacing, and we can do that as well. Or we can go back to just implement width, so it's 120, so we'd want to change this to 120 feet. And the uh, physical width, 120. So now that everything matches, we hit accept. Network, we don't need to fill out. This is more for connected support stuff. So once we have the machine and boom set up, we can go down to document. So from document, we can do single product or we can do tank mixes. So if we do tank mixes, we can add a carrier. We can name that. We can upload our prescription here. Or we can go back to a single product. And again, we can add a prescription down here with our RX tab. So if we had one, we go in here and select it. If we'd already uploaded it with the USB stick, we can put a look ahead in, time in. Um, if we made the prescriptions ahead of time and we decide we want to, you know, up the rate a little, we can put a prescription multiplier in to up that rate. And we do that here so we could up this to 110%. Uh, if you figured that correctly for the amount that you want to up that prescription rate. So we can add a product. So maybe we want to add a, you know, an additive. You can select AMS and then gallons an acre or what so it'll be in. Shouldn't be grayed out, you should be able to go ahead and you'd have a drop down there as well. We hit accept. The big thing here with documentation, we always want to make sure we just have two tabs. One that would say AMS or whatever product you're being applied here. The only time that you'd have more than that up here is if you were running direct inject, which you'll, they'll talk to you about in another video. With direct inject, you would have two tabs here. If you have more than one tab, say you had harvest here, you could click on harvest and down here at the bottom left, we could disable that operation. We also have advanced settings down here at the bottom. You can put an application method, you know, if it's broadcast, infrared, height and depth, say we're 12 inches above ground, we can go ahead and put that in there. Hit accept. 
Yeah, we'll put that in there as well. And that's kind of touching on the documentation, setting up the proper documentation for your AMS on a GS3. Next, we're going to jump into section control on a GS3 um, and how to get there and what we need to look at. So I'm going to go back to home and then we're going to hit the main menu to the bottom right. We're going to go into letter D of the GS3 green star tab again. And we're going to go down here to letter E, which is sections. I could say soft swath control on a 2600. 2630, it'll say section. Click on that. So this is the page we're going to go on. Um, if we're in summary, we need to click on settings. From there, we need, we got two in check marks we need to make sure we have here. So our section control master and our operation that we're going to be running on. We want to run them two check marks. From there, we're going to go jump down to overlap settings. So on overlap settings for exterior boundaries, uh, we can minimize skip, can minimize overlap or percentage overlap. So if minimize skip, we want to cover everything, that'd be a good option. Minimize overlap, you know, if we get a really hot, something that could potentially harm, we don't want to over apply. This might be an option we want to use. And then percentage overlap, we can maybe fine tune that a little and maybe run 50% and run in between. Minimize skip, minimize overlap. Uh, if you have questions about that, we got a little help button down here at the bottom. It'll walk you through that in there. So it'll let you go for percentage overlap, 0 to 125%. So again, you got that help button down here at the bottom. And we can do that for exterior boundaries and interior boundaries, as well as coverage. Go ahead and hit accept. Next one is turn on and off settings. So typically on our sprayer, uh, your turn on is going to be higher and your turn off is going to be lower. Good starting point is usually 1.0 for turn on and 0 0.6 for off. This is definitely not correct for everyone. It's a good starting point. Uh, this can fluctuate from the speeds that you're running. If you have two different operators, it's good to kind of record them if it's different. One of you might spray at 10 mile an hour, another one runs 14. It's going to be affected here. Again, this is just a starting point. We also have the help button on this page as well. So you got six pages down here. So we got a planner page here. And then we have a sprayer page here. And air sheeters. So again, kind of walks you through there. We go ahead and hit accept there. And the last page here we got is setting control map settings. We want to make sure that we set the foreground as actual rate so we can see our rate on the foreground map that will actually be recording for you. So go ahead and accept. Here I'm going to show some examples with the section control simulator. So the first thing I'm going to show is on and off settings. So the current on and off settings are 1 for on and 0.6 for off. Typically, your turn on time is always going to be greater than your turn off time. So 1.0 for a turn on and 0.6 for an off is typically a pretty good starting point. It's not always correct, but it's a good starting point. So I'll go ahead and show that. So it looks like you turned off correctly there. And it turned on correctly without leaving a skip or an overlap. So next I'm going to change that so you can see how the on and off time can affect your sprayer. So I'm going to put it to 0.3 on, 0.3 off. So in this video with 0.3 on, 0.3 off, it shows how we have an overlap and a skip. Next I'm going to show overlap settings. Now we're going to change this back to our optimal and then we're going to change our overlap settings. So first we'll show minimize skip which is typically what you're going to want to run so we for sure cover everything. And that actually looks like we're showing minimize overlap, not minimize skip. I'll show minimize skip. So here will actually be minimize skip. So you can tell that we're, you know, we're overlapping a little, but we're for sure getting coverage. And the last one is percentage of overlap. So say we want to, we put this at 50 
and that'll kind of be in the middle. We'll minimize skip and minimize overlap. So you can see that's a lot better. We're not over applying as much, but we're for sure getting coverage on that whole field along that waterway. Next thing I'm going to show is how important maintaining speed is. So it's really consistent to maintain speed um, in and out of headlands as well into uh, your waterways or any kind of boundary you have. So that was showing slowing down, slowed down too early, caused the skip. And I'll show constant speed. So many, maintaining constant speed, you'll notice we don't have that skip this time. I'll also show uh, speeding up when exiting the headlands. So it's going to show right here uh, the failure from speeding up when exiting the headlands. Left to skip because we ran at a different speed. So again, biggest thing with section control is maintaining speed.